All right, our first guest of tonight, as I said, you've seen him on The Sopranos, uh, the Brooklyn banker. We have him now on a, on a movie that's currently out with Adrian Brody called Clean. Let's give him an up late welcome for my man, actor, director, John Bianco. Johnny boy. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, could you turn the heat up? I'm a little cold. No, it's not. It's not it's... <laughs> oh, wait, I'm not the comedian. Yes, it. Listen, the only time the air condition blew. Come on, really, Johnny? Well, they knew where I was coming. You there's always, there's always someone in the crowd that you, don't like you it. You probably to say said, the electric bill. Johnny P's coming. Let's blow up the air condition. Let's blow up the AC. Nah, it's all right. It usually always does work. We just got to deal with it, unfortunately. Yeah, so listen. It's, I've, I've been in uh, some gritty situations, so especially when you're shooting. You know, yeah. it's either you're either shooting, you're never shooting in optimum uh, temperature. It's no. always either 30 below zero, or you know, you, you're just sweating your you're sweating your ass off. Yeah, so. yeah. There's no middle. There's no middle. No, it never is. So. But listen, you've been doing a lot behind the scenes, besides in front of the camera for yeah. a while now. Yeah. Directing. That's right. And you work with our good friend Steve Stanulis, right? I'm working with Steve Stanulis, yeah. And you just did this new project. Uh, what's this called over here? The Kanye West one. It's well, yeah. So I'm Talk directing. I'm so I'm directing um, a documentary. So uh, just to give you a little backstory on that, um, he is Steve Stanulis is uh, an ex NYPD officer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And he started going into some uh, personal bodyguarding. So he worked for, you know, DiCaprio, some pretty famous people. Yeah. And uh, he got this job with uh, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. So I think it was uh, 15 days, because the, the title is 15 Days with Kanye. So yes. after 15 days, he got fired for supposedly hitting on Kim. Yes. So, and that was uh, all over TMZ. That was a big scandal. It was everywhere. Oh, my God, yeah. Entertainment. I mean, every, every place uh, ran with the story. So, um, you know, it's kind of like uh, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. So yeah. the story kept hitting him. He got hit with like a $30 million lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he approached me, and he's like, you know what? It came, it's, it came back again. It came back again. He's like, I'd really like to tell my side of the story. So he said, I'd like you to uh, direct this documentary. This way I can put my, you know, my two cents into what, what happened. Because, yeah. you know, you're going to hear everybody's side. So he's just basically, he wants to tell his story uh, regarding the incident. Yeah, well, anyone that knows Steve knows Steve. So it would be good that he does this. Yeah. And yeah. Kanye's full of drama anyway. That guy is... Yeah. I mean, no good. <laughs> right. Well, I don't even want to. I don't even want to say what I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. But you know. So I mean, you know, it is what it is. But uh, so uh, we shot most of it. Um, currently editing it right now. Uh, probably got to do a few more pickup shots. Um, and that's that's uh, one thing that uh, I'm working on currently. Mm -hmm. um, last week we shot on Staten Island. Uh, another the pilot, project. right? The yes, Grey Kills? pilot right. called Grey Kills. That's also Steve's project. Mm -hmm. um, James Merendino uh, is directing, and he kind of put this project together. And uh -huh. you know, he had a big, a, a famous film that he done. He he done. I, I, I want to say it's back in the late '90s called SLC Punk, mm -hmm. which was like a cult film. It's a great guy, great director, and um, Steve did this character like. Uh, I want to say back in 08, 2008, and I played another character in the, but something got scrambled or whatever, and he's like, I want to bring this thing back. I think the timing is right. It's similar to like a Dexter type, yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. type of thing. Um, it's about this um, hit man that he's got this camera crew following him around as he does these hits. You know, people are upset with whatever. They want to whack out their wife or their husband. They would approach him. That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, no, and it's all like uh, a lot of it. It's not. It's just kind of like um, it's not really scripted. So we're kind of improving, which is interesting, mm -hmm. you know. So they'll give you the base story and they'll say run with that. So um, I'm playing uh, Detective Morano. Um, I'm like close friends with him, and he tries to, you know, ask me, you know, like what's going on? Is there any news about this, that, and the other thing? So um, it's an interesting concept and. Uh, he said, you know, if it does get picked up, you know, I'd, I'd have, to have, a have a recovery. You'll have a recovery. That'd be great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Steve, Steve, 
he hit the, he hit the road and kept running. Yeah, he's a and hustler. You're, you're right you next know, to him. I mean, you know, he keeps. Uh, I mean, that's that's pretty much what this business is. You got to just keep throwing the darts at the board, and yeah. you know, you have your ups and downs, uh, just like anything else. But uh, now, listen, prior prior to. Uh, that you were filming this with, with Brody, Adrian Brody, for years now, right? And then how come it took so long to get out? So actually, uh, also, uh, two, three weeks ago, I shot this other film called Dope King mm -hmm. um, with uh, Ron Elliott is the director of this film. And I, I have like this cameo spot where I own a, a boxing gym and I was just having a conversation with um, John with John in the back, and he knows the gym. Oh, wow. It's in Newark. It's a pretty famous gym. Now, I'm not that knowledgeable about that, but the, the owner also had told me a lot of famous boxers came out of that gym. Mm -hmm. So my character kind of takes advantage of the young, up-and-coming boxers there, and I try to you know, hit him up with, I'll help you get here, but yeah. you got to, you know, I need 50% yeah. on the back end. Um, so I did a nice cameo for him, and I know this guy, Ron Elliott, probably 20 years he asked me to be part of this I think Manny Perez is also in this film uh, it's gonna be a gritty film about uh, a lot of drug dealers and stuff mm -hmm. and um, it, that's an interesting uh, it's an interesting film and I was I'm happy to be part of that as yeah, well. well that's gonna be good too go back to the question with uh, with the Brody movie so Cause, Brody cause yeah. I know that was filming a while ago and yeah. then they right stopped so it was a different name no so we shot that prior to COVID um, I went up to uh, Utica for 10 days in the dead of winter and let me tell you something it is freezing up there I mean it's just crazy so um, and every place that we shot in had no heat Ugh. we shot in, in a fish shop a Sicilian guy owned the place I said what's the matter you got no they no heat here what? he goes no nah, you got no heat so it was like colder in the place than it was outside so we shot that prior to COVID and then it was ready it was supposed to be featured the movie's called Clean. It's a, it's a, he's like a vigilante, comes into this town, cleans it up. Um, I'm one of the main bad guys. Glenn Fletcher is the main bad guy. He's from Billions. Yeah, and yeah. Also, he was the main bad guy in uh, True Detective. He was also in The Joker. So there was no uh, Tribeca Film Festival. But luckily enough, and this almost never happens, 2021, summer of 2021, they had the film world premiere at a Tribeca Film Festival. It went over really well. Red carpet, you know, I was on the carpet with Adrian Brody. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we sh saw the film. It was a great experience. It was, it was great. And uh, the film is available, I believe, on Amazon Prime. I watched it last night, actually. I really did. I watched it last night. I couldn't fall asleep. So I said, let me watch this movie if I, have yeah. something to, if I know what I'm talking about with you. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, a, it's a dark film. It was an excellent film, though. Um, yeah. You might, you know, I mean, if you like that you know that type of stuff yeah uh, it's it's definitely it's it's definitely an interesting uh, film now listen John we got a little more time left uh, let's talk going back a little from the to the Sopranos days years later they got the Soprano con coming out they got the mob movie con coming out then you're right. doing all these appearances with all the guys yes. and yeah. it's been going very good it has been going uh, the, yeah. the, the Soprano con was it was unbelievable Sopranos con was uh, November of 19 we did that at the Meadowlands we had about yeah. 15,000 people there yeah it's always good to really interact with, uh, with the, with, you know, with all the fans. Definitely. You know, because um, that's what really makes us. You know, I mean, working on the show, is was just phenomenal. I worked with Frank Vincent every day. Yeah, I love Frank. Yeah. Um, I can't say enough good things about Gandolfini. Um, it was yeah, see, honor. all those guys you're so lucky to be, have. It was an honor. Have it was to an work honor with those with guys, them. especially and, Frank Vincent. Yeah, no, I James mean, James Gandolfini. I'll tell you a real quick. Feeney quick story about that um after i did the second episode my character was killed and i was like you got to be kidding me and this is while they were on hiatus so a month goes by and i was like all right whatever at least i got on the show it took me forever to get on the show they killed me i could say i was on the sopranos a month later my agent calls me and she's like you're not going to believe this uh david chase likes your character so much he's never going to air that and he wants to keep you on as recurring, and I continued to do another eight episodes like going a, into <laughs> I was like, I mean, that's a, like every actor's dream. Yeah. Is, you know, you get shot down so much, but when something like that just just reiterates uh, as to why you, you're sticking it out. And especially a show like The Sopranos, I'm sure most of the audience here, Soprano fans out there, clap. Yeah. yeah.
And we got the, we got the young generation too, which is amazing. Sopranos are never going to die. I mean, they were they were you know repeating some of my lines. You know, it was this fucking waiter on sabbatical. I mean, they were just yeah, yeah. throwing things at me, young kid, 20, 20 something year old. But now, what's coming up with you in the future? Anything we can look forward to, Johnny Boy? So I mean, obviously that that documentary I'm working on, and um, you know the thing with Steve. I hope that uh, Great Kills takes off. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the Dope King. Um, they're still shooting that right now. That's probably, you know, it usually takes six months to a year. So those two are on the horizon. And I just had a, a meeting today with, uh, with a cousin of mine, Frank Taminia. Uh, he's a great writer, and he's sending me some scripts that we're going to be looking over. Um, I can't really talk about it right now, but uh, those are in the works, and I, I think uh, we're going to be doing something. Good, with that good, as well. good. Well, you know me, I'm always here for you. I will always wish you the best. I appreciate that. You know, us Italians got to stick together. Got to stick together. Whatever's left of us, right? That's it. How many? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, everybody, John Bianco. Thank you very much.